Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to Axel's Garage. We are out here. This is video three on the XJ. Today we're putting in coil springs. And if you want to see the whole debacle of how this all started, in the description below, I'll link all the videos for this. But this should be about the third, second, third, fourth one. Third or fourth, not the second. I don't know where I'm at. It's been a, a giant project and a lot of uh, supply chain issues. But the coil springs finally came in. We got the front end all painted up and ready to go. Hopefully we'll do as little scratching as possible. We'll get these coil springs in. I know we could always touch everything up after the springs are in. So we're going to move the camera and we're going to get started. Alright, so I have the floor jack underneath the, um, the front uh, axle, I guess you would call it. You know, right where the little ball joint is and I got it all the way up. Now there's no, other than the the track bar, there is no other suspension components, you know, hooked up for the steering, just the control arms. So this is pretty, pretty much down as far as I can go. So if I take this coil spring and I slot it up, I'm close to being able to get it in. And I'm just trying to find the best angle to get it up and in. Like here it gets, it binds. But coming in from the front here seems to to get me close. But I gotta get my interferences the top here and there. I'm just gonna try by hand. And just by hand giving it a little push goes right in. And find where my spot is which stops the coil spring from rotating is right here so let me move the camera and see if I can show you exactly what that is or I could actually show you on the other side make it a little bit easier so got this right in here very little scratching very little damage um, once it's in place plenty of room going up and down for it to find its home so I'm gonna let that jack down on that side and it'll hold this spring in place for now so now with that jack down I can pop this spring in place make sure it's good on the bottom And it is, it's in the right spot. It's good on the top. It's on the isolator. And we can move around to the other side. So now on the other side, you can see I don't ha nearly have the room because I have a spring in that side. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna drag the floor jack around. I'm gonna put it under here. And I'm gonna bring that side up as far as it'll go with keeping pushing this side down. If you follow what I'm saying. So as I jack that side up, this side's going to come down, but it's going to reach a point where the spring is going to carry the weight, and then I'll start lifting the car up, and it's not lowering this anymore, so it's not making this distance from here to here any bigger. And I want to get this distance as big as possible. So that's as much as I can get out of it. And what I want to show you is get some light on it. 
what I want to show you is the coil spring you see this cut right here this is where the coil spring is going to go in so you're not going to bring that bottom coil you're going to bring it right up to this opening right here because that's going to stop the spring from turning so that's where you want that end of that coil spring when you put it in well actually when you put weight on it you can turn it back and forth until weights on it once weights on it, you're not going to be able to turn it anymore so now the second spring is usually not as easy because with that spring on that side you don't have the room like you had on this side but it's close you just miss them by a little bit all right but if you turn the spring you can get it up and in like we just did and now I could turn it so it fits in that groove right there and then what I'll do is I'll slowly lower that jack so I can get this in the right spot up top here right up top here where it goes into the isolator so I get some light on that for All you. Right, so you want it to sit up in the isolator cup correctly and down here correctly So on the passenger side, I'm good. On this side, I'm close. Okay, moved a little on the bottom. So I'll readjust where I am on the bottom. It's going into the isolated pad up top nice. So I can let it down the rest of the way. Check both sides, make sure you're good up here, make sure you're good down below. It's sitting in that, that notch where it's supposed to sit, and it looks pretty good. So now what I did was I put the jack under the rear axle, right about in the middle so that I could bring it up evenly, maybe favoring the, the, the side where the diff is a little bit, just to bring it up evenly to put a little bit of pressure on the springs just so they don't move out of the way. And now we can continue with the rest of it. We could actually put the shocks in and we could start putting the ball joints in. This this is in and this is the biggest fight unless you're going to use spring compressors, which I figured we could probably get them in without the spring compressors. And like you see, we did. These also are the half inch taller springs. So they are, they are stock springs for the most part, but they are half inch tall. They're 17 static instead of 16 and a half inch static and they still went in, no spring compressors, no problem. So you can see we got those springs in relatively easily because we got everything disconnected in there and they are a half inch longer and they still went in relatively easy. If you had a three inch lift spring, you might need spring compressors. That wasn't the case with this. We were going for stock height. The car did have a, a hair of a, a rake to it. So I'm hoping that these springs will just even it out. Um, I think they'll be fine. The other springs were original, so they were 22 years old with 134,000 miles and heavily, heavily, heavily pitted and rusted, um, just like everything else in this thing. I'll link the springs in the description below, and I'll also, in the description, link the entire playlist of us doing this whole front end. So that's it, coil springs on the XJ, taking them out, same way. I did the same exact thing to remove them. I just went in there with a pry bar and, and went, was able to pop them out once you jack up the opposite end of the of the axle. Gives you plenty of room, especially when you have everything disconnected. Hope you enjoyed the video. 